Alright, so we have this Maya character that we want to get some mocap data on. We could do it in Maya, but Motion Builder is um, is really good for mocap cleanup, and so we want to take a look at that um, and some of the advantages that it, it has. So um, here's the low res guy with his skeleton uh, with his skeleton ring. Uh, so I just exported uh, both of those as an FBX. Um, and now that brings us over to Motion Builder. Uh, the reason I'm still on 18 is uh, because the plugin for uh, Motive um, to do uh, for you to be able to stream it over to uh, Motion Builder um, has only been written through 18, so that's why I've got 18 on here. Um, okay, so first off, let's get some mocap data in here. So I'm going to drag and drop. Uh, the FBX, it gives me this uh, pop up. There is animation, so I want to do all takes. Okay, let me zoom out. I drag a big box around all of this to turn it green. And now I want to come over here to window and go to add property view and then dock that right here. I'm going to change this default type to the rotation type. Now, if you have uh, mocap data coming from Motive, you'll have two lines. Um, but since this is from Mixum, I'll only have one. But uh, yeah, I realize if you have Motive stuff, you'll have two lines. So you just want to do uh, turn everything to zero for uh, both of those lines. But I only have one. Okay. And uh, so I just clicked on that and zero, tab zero, tab zero. If you have another one, do another tab and zero, tab zero, tab zero, and so forth. Uh, that gets us to our T-Pose. I'm going to drag a box over here because I want to get this back to a gray view. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on uh, Templates and Characters. And in here is a character. And I want to drag that out onto our hips. And this is the reason why I wanted this to be gray because when I get it onto the hips, you can see that they turn green. I'll let go. Go to Characterize and Biped. What that's done is that's created a, a character um, to represent this mocap data. Um, and then from here, uh, now that we've set that to the character that we just created, we can click on this blue dude, go to Bake Plots. Uh, we want to come down to Bake Plot 2 Control Rig, click the three dots, FKIK, and this all looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to click OK. And now we have a control rig. Cool. All right, so now we need to get our uh, dude in here. And that was that FBX export that I was just telling you about. And that's this little file here. So I'm just going to drag and drop that. FBX merge. And I'm going to do no animation because there's no animation on this dude. And he is in here. Problem is, I can't see his skeleton. So if I go to display, I can turn on x-ray mode. And now um, everything's kind of sitting on itself, but I'm going to zoom in. And I can see his little skeleton right there. So we need to characterize his skeleton. So I'm going to drag that out onto, and I'm finding the geo a little bit, you can see. But there will be a point where I hit it, and the, bones, the, the hip bones will just go green. I'm going to let go, go to characterize, and biped. Again, you just want to make sure uh, that your character is in a C posed um, type of pose, um, and you should be good. Okay, what that's done for us is it's created another character, and that's character one. Um, but what we can do is we can set our source to our mocap data, which is our character. And now you can see we now have mocap data on our dude, which is pretty cool. There's a couple things I don't like though. Um, I don't want his helmet coming up like that. Um, and there's like a section in here like where his, yeah, you can see like his finger is clipping his, um, his legs right there. And so I don't want that either. So this is the power of uh, Motion Builder is it allows us to um, tweak mocap data. Um, really well and so one of the ways that we can do that is through animation layers so i'm going to add an animation layer um, and i'm going to right click and i'm going to go to rename 
I'm going to call this arm, uh, arms offset. Cool. And again, the way I did that was I just clicked that little icon right there and it makes an uh, animation layer. Okay. So what I can do, I tend to like to be at frame zero when I start to do any kind of work. And then I'll just kind of work my way through as I need. Um, but I like to be on frame zero at first. I'm going to go to rotation. Okay. And we have our tools over here, but I'm just going to use my shortcut. So you can see that's the rotation. Um, so I click the little shoulder. I'm going to rotate his arm out just a little bit. And I'm going to click S to set a key. And you can actually see uh, drop down a little keyframe note right there. Let's go back to frame zero. And I'm going to rotate that arm out. And I'm going to click S for that. Okay. And so it's still the same mocap data. We just animated on uh, top of it a little bit to offset some things. So if I click play now, you can see that the mocap data still works. His arms are just out a little bit further. Cool. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to tweak is that head, right? Because I don't want his head to be like that. I want it to feel more like the helmet's connected uh, somehow to the shirt. Okay. So let's create another animation layer. And we're going to rename this to, so right click and rename, um, head lock. Okay. So we have two types of animation layers. We have additive mode where we can animate on top and we can do our own animation. But underlying that, is the base animation, right? So we did our arms offset, but we still have this base animation of the mocap data. Uh, well, we have another um, mode that we can completely overwrite everything under um, underneath, so to speak. And the way we access that is we'll right click on it, go to layer mode, and we'll change that to override. Cool. So what I'm going to do, and again, I'm on frame zero. I'm just going to select this. I'm just going to rotate his head down something like that. And then I'm going to click S to set a key. And so now you can see it's still the same animation, but now his head is just holding that position. He's not he's not looking up so to speak so he just holds that position he flexes but he keeps his head kind of locked in that position um, again we could continue to animate like down here if I wanted to rotate his head back up I mean I totally could um, but for this character I think it's it's simple enough um, uh, just to uh, do that the other thing I might like to do like this foot looks like it's like rolling kind of funky a little bit so I might add another animation layer. I'm going to right click on that, rename, and call this uh, RT underscore foot uh, tweak. I'm going to keep this right in additive mode. So I'm going to go back to frame zero. Just going to rotate that foot a little bit. Once I get something that I like, again, I'm going to do S to set a keyframe. Okay, so I want to show you guys one last thing. And that is how to um, use a layer override to do our own animations. And then blend that back into the mocap data so that we can go from one into the other. So let's take a look at how we would do that. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and create another layer. 
and then I'm going to right click on this, I'm going to do rename. I'm not going to keep this, so I'm just going to call this delete. Um, this is just more for demonstration purposes. Okay, so I'm going to right click on this layer, I'm going to go to layer mode, change it to override. And I'm going to come to this shoulder, and I'm just going to do something weird, uh, just just to make the, the point of, of how this would work. So, I'm going to use my rotation tool. I'm going to rotate my arm out, and I'm going to click S to set a keyframe. Uh, just FYI, you could also set a key here, step forward, or backwards and forward keys, and delete keys, and that sort of stuff in there as well. Okay, so, I've done... Um, kind of a weird key there. I want to point out this last little function down here and you can see this weight and each layer has its own weight and this little K we can set a keyframe. Now the problem with this is when you click this you won't see uh, the keyframes for this uh, attribute in the time slider so my advice would be I'll just set a keyframe up here uh, to coincide with uh, these and that way you can also kind of keep track of where these are. Okay, so 100%, I'm gonna have this uh, override layer set to 100%. I'm gonna come out to maybe frame 36. Um, and then maybe we could do uh, something where we do something like that, right? So then set a keyframe, right? So I'm just doing some weird stuff uh, just to kind of make a point. Okay, so we've got his arm right there. I'm going to come here, I'm going to key uh, this at 100% again. So now we have this completely overridden animation where we've taken his arm and done this uh, funky stuff to it. And so uh, there's mo no mocap. But let's say we've done a, um, an animation for a section of frames and we want to blend that back into the mocap. So how would we do that? Well, first, we want to give it a nice... Uh, set of frames to blend from one to the other because if you do it too close, it'll just snap, right? So we want to give it uh, some blend time. So I'm going to come out um, maybe around frame 50 or so and from here, I'm going to go ahead and click S to set another keyframe just so I can see the little uh, key out there. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little a dot right here. I'm going to slide it all the way to the left and we can see that that turns to a weight of zero. And then I'm going to click K to set a key. Okay. So what we have at this point is if I go back to frame one, we have uh, frame one to 36. I've taken over the animation and I'm doing my own sets of animation from uh, frame one or zero to 36. And then from 36 to 50, I'm blending that back into the mocap uh, data or animation and then after this point then it's back to regular mocap data. So this could be pretty handy um, if we need something to happen that that didn't originally occur in the mocap data. Maybe our character needs to reach higher or maybe we need our character to do something completely different. Uh, this is a way that we can do our own sets of animation and override the mocap data, but then be able to blend back into it um, so that we can get back into the mocap data if, if we want to. So anyways, uh, so yeah, so that's that's good for uh, on, on that workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer because I don't, that was, again, more for demonstration. And now... We play through this, we should see we've got some mocap data assigned and a little bit of cleanup. Cool. I'm going to turn off the display for the x ray because I just, or oops, click back on normal. I just because I just want to like just look at the mocap data or the animation now. So play that. So we have a character, we've got some mocap data assigned to him, and we've cleaned it up a little bit. Alright, I think that's working out pretty well. So now we need to get this over to Maya. And we do have a Maya uh, link, right? We could send it to 
uh, to Maya. Um, but I want to be able to, um, since, since I've already got him shaded and, and, and shaders assigned and textures, I mean, I could export all this and redo all that, um, but I just really want the mocap uh, data baked down into um, uh, his rig. And so um, I, I don't need it all right now, all anymore, right? I've done the work. I like what it is. I just need to get something basic over to Maya. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to character one because that is our character. I'm going to click on the blue dude and I'm going to go to bake the plot. And this time I'm going to do bake the skeleton, right? So I want to bake all that stuff to his skeleton. And that looks good. And I'm going to plot all of that. All right, cool. Now, let's get this over to Maya. So let's go to File, and let's go to Motion File Export. And let's go. Um, Yeah, let's go here. We'll just call this. Um, no, we've already got a few that I was kind of working on, so we'll do that. Um, so we need to kind of dive through projects. Um, mocap, and we'll do this as like 04. I don't need everything, so. Do that. Sometimes you'll have more than than one thing, so you can just kind of click on which one you want to export. Uh, so I'm going to export that, and then we're going to come back to Maya. Let's go to this clean scene, make sure that this is importing. Okay, so let's go to File and Import. And make sure we're getting what we want here. Cool. So we're getting a little more um, than what we need. I can see the one I want. It's that one right there. So, um, yeah. So we can basically come in here, select all that, and delete. And now we have this nice, uh, clean. Um, rig data. Alright, so let's export that again. Um, okay, now we'll change this to FBX and the underscore 2. Okay, so now let's come back to this scene. So at this point, all we need to do is go ahead and import uh, the cleaned up uh, mocap uh, data. And we'll see, we now have mocap data on straight onto our rig. And we can do a render of that. Cool. Uh, looks like our character is floating a little bit, so we probably want to move our model down. Our rig group. Alright. So since this is our group for our rig, we should be able to just take that, pull the whole thing down. Cool. So at this point, I think, uh, I think this is good.